So here we go. It's part two of our three-part audio series on being powerful. So you know what being powerful is and what it isn't, and you've got the signs and symptoms of not being powerful. Today, Louise and I are talking about connecting with your unique, authentically your superpower. Not sure what your superpowers are? Well, today's episode will help you to remember them. Here's to unleashing your inner superhero. Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tutte, your medical herbalist and high-performance coach. So, hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul sense of joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So, hey, let's get started, shall we? Hi there, and welcome back to the second audio in our audio series. I'm Tracy, and I'm here with Louise. (laughs) (laughs) And today we are talking about superpowers. So, what superpowers are you hiding away, and how can you use that to owning even more of your power? So, Louise. Tell me about superpowers. What superpower are you hiding away? Well, I've got too many to mention. Um, (laughs) Not really. I think one of the things I've really had to own over the last year is that I kind of feel what's not being said and where the blocks are. So Mm. so if if I'm talking with a client, it doesn't matter whether it's face to face or whether it's on, you know, over, over online stuff. I can feel when what they're saying isn't what is underneath that. Yeah. Now, that so it can sometimes be feel like a superpower. Another time, it can be really challenging because I can't just lay that out there. <laughs> I can question the perception, but it's yeah. my, my job to say, well, I think you're lying, you know, because I know when those beliefs have hold, they're so incredibly powerful that we can't possibly think that we are anything other than that belief so that that would definitely be one thing um really owning the intuitive stuff that I get now and it's made a massive difference to the way that I work yeah what about you my superpower that I'm hiding away stems back from my childhood actually so one of my superpowers is that I have the ability to connect people with their inner wisdom and their spirit I love that uh, Yeah, and it's one of those things where my parents tried really hard to get me not to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, like you were saying, it doesn't always fit in well in social situations, especially when you have a ring bunch of six-year-old wandering around (laughs) spouting stuff that shouldn't really be spouted. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And it's interesting, really, because, you know, that that was a superpower I've had since I was very young. Um, I, rather than my parents teach me how to use it with love and compassion. Um, They attempted to help me to survive and to help me to fit in by Mm -hmm. um, teaching me to dampen it down. So to Mm -hmm. hide my superpower under a rock. Mm. And it's something which has been a real struggle to reconnect with. Um, And a lot of that has been to do with permission and my identity with it. But now that I am more in touch with it, it is something that I use in my coaching that, you know, can really help people to uncover, you know, what's going on for them. Because, it, you know, as coaches, we're about asking the questions that help people uncover their own wisdom because it's about what works for them. Yeah. Um, so it's something that I'm starting to become even more comfortable with. Love that. I love that. Mm. And I think it's important to perhaps note in here as well that a superpower can be, again, it doesn't need to be something that's like really in your face. So I think one of the most powerful things that we can do, the biggest superpower we can have is to listen yeah. and to really be present with somebody, whether it's your child or your spouse or a, a client or somebody, just somebody you meet in the supermarket to actually be in that moment fully with them and hear what they're saying and acknowledge and honor where they're at. That's a freaking superpower. Yeah. Because I think so many of us want to be heard and there is a tendency for us, isn't there? You know, it's a lot of coaches do it. 
um, mm. and our friends do it because they think they're doing the right thing and they go, oh, you're so not, or don't be silly, but, and, and so we negate those things, whereas maybe if someone just listened, we're not looking for the answer, we're not mm. looking for someone to necessarily challenge us just to be able to listen and for us as the listener to know if it would be appropriate to offer a different perception or another advice or whether it's just that being silent and letting that person speak and be seen mm. and be heard mm. um, so I think it's important that when we talk about superpowers that we are not implying to all of you that you need to be you know, sort of running around in lycra on a cape um leaping over tall buildings <laughs> Well, my legs are way too short for that. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and again, the whole superpower thing, whatever you do in your business, you kind of need to remember that there's a reason you chose that and not something else. Mm. I think I'd like to just have a conversation now about how we can kind of start to unravel that because I do think that sometimes we can get so far down the line in our business, we've lost the passion for it because we've got caught up in the making the money machine like we talked about in the first episode. Yeah. Um, and, and we kind of, without that drive, without that passion, it's really difficult to keep going. So something mm. that I did was I looked down my timeline. And again, this is a bit of a similar to an exercise that you and I have been doing in that, the coaching program. Um, mm. I went down my timeline. I had a look at all the things that I've ever done. Now I've done a lot of different stuff over the years, um, cool. which is great. And again, when it comes to how we're perceived by that, I had a real issue with that because my parents always said to me, Louise, you're so flighty. You don't stick to anything, Louise. You do this and you do that. And I remember yeah. when I was about, oh God, I don't know how old I was, 35 or something like that, 2006 it was, um, I went to university to study to become a midwife. And I remember one of my brothers saying to me, well, I don't know why you're bothering Louise because you never finish anything anyway. And he was right, I didn't finish it. But I mean, that's a whole other story. <laughs> but it's, it was only listening to Elizabeth Gilbert's um, talk about the hummingbird. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm actually a hummingbird. So that, again, gave me permission to own that. But going back and having a look at what you've done up until these points and having a look at what you facilitated in that process, I think gives us a real clue about what our bigger purpose is. Does that make sense? Mm. It's like experiencing different elements to determine what you want to take with you on your journey through life. Is that, yeah. that where yeah, we're going? Yeah, because I remember when, when we first met, so Tracy and I have only known each other since November, um, and it was a serendipitous love at first sight moment, wasn't it, Trace? It was. <laughs> love, over <laughs> three, love over three glasses of champagne. Um, <laughs> and I remember when we started coaching with each other, and, mm. you know, you've got this amazing, um, tell people what your degree that you've got. Oh, um, I'm a medical herbalist, so I have a BSc in health sciences, majoring in herbal medicine. Yeah, so she's pretty freaking amazing when it comes to that stuff. Um, and she's amazingly intuitive um, and energetic when it comes to her other work as well. And then we had the CHPC on the end of that sandwich. And we yeah. were talking, weren't we? And you were like, yeah, I just don't see how all this comes together. Well, no. One of my gifts is that I can see that, right? I can, for me, it's like, well, duh, of course it all comes together. Um, you know, and, and for you, it was like literally living their best, most energetic life from the inside out because you specialize a lot in, um, problems with the digestive system, which we know can yeah. come from stress and not living your true self, la, 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 la. Talk, yeah. And the high performance coaching is the most amazing framework for people to become their best selves. Yeah. But sometimes it takes for us to look, to take a step back and look from the outside in, kind of get that whole different perception um yeah. to allow us to kind of own that so one of the things I'd like to ask you is when you're thinking about what your superpowers might be number one we can go and ask our friends okay so I did this recently in my Facebook group for the course that we're doing and mm. um generally the consensus was um we love the way you do your stuff without any bs you tell it how it is but you're also prepared to be vulnerable and I do everything from a space of love and you know positive expectation for our my community to live their best life and you right. hold a safe space so you know it's okay to explore as well yeah absolutely yeah. right and actually having to own what you said about in the last episode the wisdom that I've gained from my own journey to say mm. to people okay sometimes it can feel like you're having your head pulled off you know and that's okay you're going to be fine 
But also, mm. you know, we have to learn when we are living underneath our own BS, like when we're telling ourselves to stuff that doesn't serve. Um, but, you know, as you start thinking about the listeners are to think about their superpowers, I would advise them to go back and have a look at what do they hear back a lot from their friends and family and community? Mm. What have they always kind of really liked to do? Because I think, say, for instance, if you're an advocate for other people, you've shown that probably from day dot. You'll have been the person that always wanted to make people feel better. That's still a superpower. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I want to just quickly share the exercise that we got given in the course where he's kind of said, have a look at your favorite films and your favorite books and have a look at the general theme of that film or book. And you're going to find out what's really important to you. Yeah. I love that. Cycle exercise I really, really loved it. And I was like, it really just highlighted, you know, what I was really driven by. I think it'd be quite a good time now to actually tell the listeners what cards we pulled for today, because I think it's kind of, it's heading that way. So what was the card that you pulled for our session today? For today's session, yeah. I have pulled the Angel of Purpose. I love that. And so this, cool. It is so cool and so relevant because in the last episode, we talked to you about making it bigger than you. Yeah. And as you mentioned the word purpose, but when you, um, when you make it other than you, then there is, well, there is more purpose. Viktor Frankl talks about man's search for ultimate meaning. If you've never read the book, well worth the read. But also mm. when we talked about clarity, like just win today, just win tomorrow, just win the week, just win the month. You can just choose in that moment, today I will live on purpose. I will eat the best way that I can. I will communicate the best way that I can. I will drain every drop of experience out of today so that you live yeah. of and on purpose. And the card I drew around that was conditioning. So, and it's interesting, we're going to go and talk about future identity in a second, but the fact that, you know, we get to decide, do we live like the sheep that we've been made to think that we are? Or do we develop that sense of power within, you know, and become the lion? You know, and actually, if you think, we talked before about the power being sort of quite serene. Mm. Most of the time, the lion lays around, you know, licking his parts and eating, doesn't he? And having sex. Some baby. You know, he's got a pretty nice life. He's not going around being all raw all the time. <laughs> so, um, but it's the conditioning is whether you're prepared to break free from the thoughts that have been sort of implanted in your subconscious that make you believe that your expression is limited. Yeah. And interestingly, the lion's not afraid to go raw when it's needed. Exactly. Right. And, and I think, you know, it's when you can kind of wake up in the morning and decide that, you know, today you will live like the lion that you are. Right. That you, you can walk with that sense of pride and you can walk with your shoulders back and you can choose in that in each moment to kind of feel really engaged and connected to what you need to do. So, mm. you know, that in itself is a superpower because, you know, that 95 percent of the population will never live like that. They live those, that caged or comfortable life. We're mm. talking, hopefully, to the 5% of the population that want to experience the highest expression of themselves. Yeah. And that requires a level of courage. Um, now, we also talked about how can we do this without feeling like we need to apologize? Because when we own our power, whatever way you want to call it, we're going to mm. have to do things like put new boundaries in place, right? So no, I'm sorry I can't run around after you because I have got my own agenda. Or no, I'm sorry I can't just, you know, I can see you, but I can't see you for two weeks. How can we do that without feeling that we have to apologise for what we're trying to achieve? Yeah, it's a really good question. It's, um, it's something that I've been playing with because when we were at High Performance Academy and we, were, we get to choose words that um, mm -hmm. define our identity, even if it's just for the day. Um, and it kind of started this conversation for me, really, because one of the words I chose was powerful. Mm -hmm. And we were in, um, so it's in a group coaching session. So if you guys have, have not experienced group coaching, it's, it's the most amazing group that you can be with because they're all there cheering you on, supporting you, um, you know, cheering you every step of the way. And we had to choose our words and we had to describe why we'd chosen them. And when I chose the word powerful, I found myself apologizing to this group for having chosen that word. I was like, 
oh, well, you know, um, uh, uh, well, um, so <laughs> women find it really hard to be, per- and like my whole like demeanor, the words I was using, the tone I was using, I was like, I'm so sorry to take up your time talking about being powerful. Um, and, you know, it's a real trigger, I think, around, you know, that identity and almost giving ourselves permission to be powerful as well. Yeah. Um, you know, and, I mean, we get to do this exercise what, over three days, isn't it? So the, yeah. more, the more we did it, the less apologetic I became. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting that that was down there because one of the things you said earlier on our call today was talking about, um, you know, often we're not aware of what's blinding us. We're not aware of those belief systems that are in place that are for example, stopping us from being powerful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's one of the things that can really get in the way, I think, of opening this up and exploring this identity of being Mm -hmm. powerful as well. Yeah, totally. Before we go on from that, I want to just kind of say that what you said there about that exercise, it's really worth each of you doing this exercise because one of the ways that you change, well, I think the primary way that you change your life is you develop psychological mastery. And the definition, which is ingrained in my head, is to develop a free, consciously directed and positively engaged mind. So we have to learn to be directive rather than reactive. So Mm. the exercise that Tracy just talked about was giving yourself three words that would describe your ideal self. Yeah. Tracy, what were yours apart from powerful? Do you remember? Joyful. Mm -hmm. Powerful and wise. Lovely. My Mm. words were um, bold, aligned, and queen. And you know what? The looks looks that I used to get when I said queen, I was like, I'm not apologizing for it. I've seen the picture. (laughs) So a lot of you probably won't know my story, but I had a theta healing session um, last year. I think it was about last June. And I had a very, very clear image of a past life where I was being a queen in medieval times. And God, I totally owned that bustle. I have to say. <laughs> um, and in that moment, what it was, again, it just reminded me, it was that serene power. And I remember looking out of, or being aware of my kingdom, if you like, and only thinking I wanted the best for them, right? I didn't feel separate from them. I didn't feel like I was different or better than them. I was like, how do we all have this best stuff? But the other thing in that, because at the time I was having real, still real issues about pricing my services and really owning the whole money thing. And the the message was, you know, as a queen, you didn't question your worth. You didn't question, you know, you, you didn't think about money. You didn't expect somebody to come and question whether you were worth it. So if you own that queen status 24 seven, then mm. when you do price your products and services and you're talking about how much you, you know, how much you charge and, and whatever, once you've landed that price, it is not up to you to deal with that. It's up mm. to the person that's asked for the price to deal with their reaction to that. And I was like, that it literally bang, it was an instant learning. And from that moment, I've never had um stickiness around what I've price because it's, it was that case of you know I've worked through that so I, ju- I just wanted to share that but picking yeah. out three words for yourself that would describe the best of who you are and how you want to show up and then having them go off on your alarm regularly through the mm. day and mm. instead of just going oh yeah 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 and swiping it off just sit with those words for 60 seconds and ask yourself are you acting from that space and if not bring yourself back because I know that when I'm in my aligned and bold and queen-like state, I am invincible, right? Regardless yeah. of what's going on around me. Um, yeah. So I love that. I love that exercise. Um, and one of the things um, that you talk about, which I love, is talking about raising your ambition. Yes. So that it matches that future identity. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. So. Um, Raising ambition has been more of a journey from having been on the other side. So um, my identity used to be, you know, a single parent claiming benefits, just trying to work her way out of the hole. That was literally my, my identity. And survival. Survival. 
and also a lot of um, guilt and shame and justification of how I ended up where I was and kind of trying to prove a point. And I honestly, honestly did not know that I had the ability to choose what was possible for me. I didn't know that I could create a version of my life and live a version of my life that was completely different to the one that I was already in. It was that whole, I was very stuck in that very linear thinking, you know, you work so many years at this job, you get a pay rise, you know, and it's a step-by-step process. As I started to work on my own limiting beliefs and discovering, holy crap, I've got this power inside of me that was there all along, what do you know? Um, (laughs) I started to feel really different about, and for me, it started from, I will no longer accept this. It didn't start as I'm going there. For me, it was a movement away from what I would no longer tolerate. I wasn't going to tolerate making ends meet anymore. I wasn't going to tolerate having to eat crap food because that's all I could afford or getting my kids clothes from a second hand box at school. It was non-negotiable. And the more I did this work, found amazing people like you, did, you know, got into the whole high performance stuff. All of a sudden, my ambitions I just can't even begin to tell you how they magnified. It was a quantum shift into success is the only option. And when I talk about success, I want it all. I want the deep joy, the deep alignment, the fulfillment, the love, the passion, the money. But more than all of that, I want to wake up and feel like I've got meaning every day. Wow. And I truly believe that when we drop the veil of BS around who we are, And we can all step into that power. A hundred percent believe that. Mm. Because that's who we naturally are, right? You know, it's when you think about, is it something like the the chances of each one of us individually being born is something like one in a trillion. And I, and I was laying, I had a really weird thought. I was laying in bed last night and I'm thinking, this is going to sound really weird, but just hear me out. I was thinking, why is our bum not in our feet? Right. And that is a, it's a bit weird, but I was thinking about like how the, the digestive system works. And okay, so the yeah. mouth is at the top end of your body. So why is the bottom at the not the bottom end of your body? Why is it not like, why does it not come out of your feet? <laughs> <laughs> this is the, the story of being in my head. But then I got to thinking about how incredible the human body is. Yeah. You know, it renews itself every seven years, right? We can't even understand the power within the brain. We are processing like 2 million bits of information per second. We've got Mm. an unending number of uh, chemical reactions going on at any one time. Mm. And we think we're born to do a nine to five and live for a weekend. Mm. And it took me 40 years to get to that space. You know, we are born in this magnificence. You know, you think about how those two little things come together to create the embryo and and then, and it all just kicks off. And yeah. sometimes I do have to bring myself back to remembering that in order for us to refine that magic. Yeah. That's a bit deep, isn't it? You're still thinking about the bottom in your I'm... feet, aren't you? <laughs> 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 but the raising ambition, even, I mean, I will say that when we met at HPC, um, again, there was an instant shift for me. I would just like to say, yeah, before we move on, because I think it's important when we with the, the free exercises that we're going to give you is that all learning is unconscious and unlearning can be unconscious totally in mm. the respect that where we have um, an experience or an incident with a powerful emotional response, we, we can create a belief. So I always use the example of fear of flying, like you didn't have a fear of flying, but you had a particularly nasty flight and instantly the incident plus the emotions gave you a belief. Yeah, it wasn't very good. Equally so, the same thing can happen. Sometimes we can just, something can happen, an experience can happen or an incident can happen. We have this beautiful surge of energy throughout our body. Bang, new belief is installed. Yeah. And I remember being at HPC and walking from the ballroom back towards the reception. And it was like for a moment I was floating. I wasn't even walking. And I felt like this is where I belong. And I knew Mm. I would never go back to my old way of thinking, like I'd gone up another level or I'd set up a level, an outer level, whatever you want to call it. 
And that's mm. all part of that awareness, putting yourself in those situations where you are around people that have got way bigger ambitions than you and then let them pull you along. Yeah. Rather than staying stuck in the same old thing. So talk to me about you, because I know you've had shifts recently, you know, in terms of where you want to go and, and how you want to impact the world. Do you see yourself creating a different future identity? Yeah, it's interesting because my identity feels like it's something that's constantly evolving. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've gone, I mean, I've gone through quite a few, pro- like, so uh, I started my career as a chartered accountant and, and that was my identity. Um, and then I remember my role was made redundant and that was the time when I realised that attaching my identity to my occupation probably wasn't a very good idea. Mm. And it's something I think that confronts a lot of people who, you know, when they're made redundant and their their occupation has completely and utterly fulfilled their identity, mm-hmm. um, you know, because they're left with this sense of, so what what do I do? Mm-hmm. What now? Where do I go? Who am I? Um, and for me, it started a journey of exploration where, you know, I trained in a, a number of um, healing modalities just to try and find those answers, really. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I found as I've, you know, as I've sort of gone through that and come out the other side and round about, and I don't know, it feels like I've done like a really topsy-turvy journey on it, <laughs> it's <laughs> that it, it's okay to do different things. It's okay to have different um, identities on the journey along the way because they all become part of you. It's, yeah. it's like, I think at some stage I was like, okay, so I'm the accountant, that's my identity. And then, okay, I'm the stress therapist, that's my identity. Uh, I'm the business owner, that's my identity. I don't want to be an entrepreneur because I don't like how that feels. Um, I'm the medical herbalist because that's my identity. But actually they're all different facets of the same thing. Yeah. And I, well, I, the connection is about joy and serving and yeah. you know, your body knows exactly what it needs to do to heal itself. Yeah. So you're right. Why would we limit that yeah. to a nine to five job that we don't particularly like? Yeah. Let's use our life as an opportunity to serve and experience and live and learn. Yeah. And I think that's what I, it can be both my biggest kick up the butt and my biggest frustration um, yeah. because, you know, I'll go back to that Derek Rydell's book that came along at the perfect time as things always do. And really it just kind of, as I read it, I was like, Oh my God, I've been teaching this to my clients, even as a personal trainer for years mm-hmm. and, and totally never owned it. Cause I didn't think I was good enough. You know, yeah. and if it if it comes so easily out of my mouth and it can't possibly be valuable, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but that whole thing of that we are here to live our highest expression. Now, yeah. for me, ultimately that means that joy and fulfillment and really kind of connecting and really being your best person. But at the same time, it, it's frustrating because it can be really hard work. Mm. It's easy to do the same shit every day, right? It's easy to be the robotic you, the the series of learned behaviors. That's easy. What's not easy is when you wake up in the morning and the thoughts start before you've even opened your eyes. And and I'm sure we all know what that feels like. And saying to yourself, I'm not listening to that. I'm going to redefine what's going on right this minute before I get out of bed. Mm. Um, it's not easy to work out when actually it'll be way easier to put the TV on and have a cup of coffee and a couple of biscuits, right? It's, mm-hmm. it's not easy to listen to your spouse when you want to punch them in the face, but you want to give them space to, <laughs> to express what they uh-huh. might need and feel. But I think we may talk about this a little bit more in the next episode as well. But one of the things that we talked about when we were discussing this was how much of our identity is wrapped up in like generational beliefs, what women are supposed to do. We are supposed to birth children. We are supposed to run the home. We are supposed to be demure. We are, and actually we are so far removed from that now. Mm. I think we both believe that the female business owners are part of a massive energy and spiritual revolution. um, And we're here to make a huge impact on the world. But feeding back to what you said there about doing lots of different things, Mm. instead of us feeling like we've got mixed identities 
eat, like you said, each one of those things is a way for us, us to express another part of who we are. Mm. Right? So you've done all of these different things, but like you say, you've brought them all to the table. They're all part of your tapestry. Yeah. But actually, we are always going to, our fundamental identity is always going to be a thing and we express that in different ways. And um, yeah. we wanted to ask our listeners, didn't we, how, how could they create an alignment with their future identity? Because when we talked about raising ambition, one of the mm. biggest blocks to, to people not achieving the success that they desire, whether that is in business, whether it's in a fitness regime, whether it's in a relationship, is that they can't feel themselves emotionally attached to that vision. They can't see themselves in it. Yeah. Right? So how can we help the listeners to raise their ambition by, first of all, connecting with a future identity? What would they need to do? Well, I think part of this um, difficulty in connecting with that future identity is actually giving ourselves permission to have that amazing life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, often we feel a disconnect with this future identity because it's at some space in the future um, and we're right here right now. And we have this, this sense that um, we, don't, we don't really deserve to be that future identity. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there are many reasons for feeling that we don't deserve that future identity, but the one that I would like to just talk briefly about now is this idea of giving ourselves permission to be powerful, giving ourselves permission to be joyful, giving ourselves permission to be wise, whatever, you know, whatever that key identifier is for you. Um, and one of the things that I would like to invite our listeners to do is just to check in and just imagine that there is a dial in front of, you know, like a speed dial on your motor car, which goes from zero to a hundred, for example, and just check in with yourself and say, okay, so on a scale from zero to a hundred, how much permission am I giving myself right now to be my natural, authentic, powerful self. Mm -hmm. Between zero and 100. Where's that dial? And it's one of the things that, um, you know, in the, we're going to do a couple of bonus audios, aren't we? Yeah. And one of the things that um, I'll be talking about is, okay, so what is that permission level that we're giving ourselves? And then what can we do to increase that permission mm -hmm. level? Mm -hmm. What can we do to easily check in with that permission level? so that we make it easier to connect with that future identity. Yeah, I love that. And, um, you know, I think we've discussed this before, is that we, we can sometimes be good at, particularly when it comes to the attainment of material stuff, we can go, oh, I'd love that car, or oh, I'd love that dream house. And we can think about it, but we, we don't allow ourselves to connect with us being in that picture. Right? We can't feel that mm. connection because of these beliefs. So, you know, you've just said about the exercise that you're going to do and one of the, the exercises I'm going to provide will allow you to tap into wherever you birth that belief and remove that from your timeline and, and move forward because it's not true. You said there, permission for a bigger life and you talked about deserving. I'd like mm. to add on to that to say that you give yourself permission to have that bigger life without justification or compromise. Nice right? Because a lot of people will say, well, you know, I'm going to go for that, but I'm going to make sure I make it as really hard for myself as I possibly can. So I can justify my gargantuan bank account, the amazing relationship that I've got on this business that floats my boat, because how dare I have all of that when so many other people suffer? Yeah. Right? Well, we're not making a big difference without that level of income. And, you know, and, and again, when we create a life like that and we joyfully and aligned and from our heart we are giving everybody else permission to do the same and it feeds back to them to say you know if it's possible for them it's possible for me mm. but as they do that so we, we asked you earlier on to just sort of define your three words mm. I would also like you to um as we build up to the kind of the last episode is Think about yourself in your ideal world. Think about this future identity. So your business is, is hugely successful. You are financially, soulfully, um, you know, spiritually time free. You know, you've got all this freedom to do what you want. And I want you to look at that picture of yourself in, you know, see yourself in that picture and look at yourself and say, how are you different physically? How are you different mentally and emotionally? 
what's different with your finances, what's different with your relationships, and also what's different about the meaning that you give to your life experience. Mm. So that we can tip people away from existing and treating life like a chore and flip them into experiencing a life that is a creation. Yeah. But you have to have that powerful serenity to be who you need to be to make that happen. So make a list of all those things, of how, how in this picture of your ideal life, things would be different, you would be different, what your meaning would be. And then I would ask you to write out what, is the conflicting conversation that will start in your head the minute you write that down. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it doesn't have to be an either or thing, does it? It can be and. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so as an example, you know, in, in this ideal version of my life, my ideal version, I'm definitely living somewhere in the countryside. Um, I have no houses around me. I can hear birdsong all the time. I'm drinking beautiful coffee outside in the garden every morning. Da, 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 da. And once upon a time, the first thing, as I wrote that, because I, I, I remember doing this so many times, writing that thing down, and the first thing that came into my head was, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, I don't know who you think you are. It just mm. felt like so far removed from anything that was possible for me. Now yeah. my language is, right, what's the next step to get there? Yeah. So write down that future identity. Try and connect with her emotionally as much as you can. And make a note of the conflicting conversation that starts in your head because you'll be able to use that conversation for the exercises that you're going to be using with me and Tracy at the end of the audio series. Um, so I think we've kind of covered that one then today. We've, we've looked at your superpower. We'd, uh, we'd ask you, there's a lot of exercises for you to do in this one, and we would recommend that you do them. You know, even if you are just thinking about them whilst you're driving somewhere or you're commuting, but you know, you're super, you, everybody, everybody has a superpower. Each of you has a unique life experience that has given you wisdom that somebody else could not have. Mm. And, you know, superpowers, again, can be silent. You know, it can be, it can be in the listening. It can be in the compassion. It can be in your, you know, in your joy. Voice. And joy. You know, yeah. aren't those really happy people just so goddamn annoying? You when know? I see my genus, my mission <laughs> is to do whatever I can to make her laugh. <laughs> right, and that's, <laughs> You know, people that are living on purpose, that's a superpower because what you're doing is you are not allowing your internal environment to be affected by the external environment. You just hold your space in, mm. the, in the best space that will move you forward. And that is a, that's a real challenge. Then we talked about kind of just going back down your timeline, having a look at what are all the things that you've done in life? What was the common themes through that? You know, what really lights you up so that you can just reconnect to the, the reason why you do what you do now um, and connect that to your superpower. We've given you the exercise to find your three words um, and to give yourself permission for a bigger life. Have all that you want without justification and compromise. And then the final one was just your future identity and the conflicting conversation that might start up. Phew. That's a lot for a session. <laughs> Tracy and I are full on in case you hadn't noticed. Um, <laughs> but you know what? I, I, what I truly believe is that um, giving yourself permission to, um, I'm getting like unpicking, like unpicking mm -hmm. sewing, like unpicking mm -hmm. all that and um, just allowing new doorways of perception to open. That was what changed my life completely. When somebody mm -hmm. gave me permission to... Um, not own what my thoughts were when she said to me you do know that thought doesn't belong to you it's not part of who you are it's just it's just learned and I was like I have no idea what you're talking about and she taught me how to start changing that and she changed my life because of that so we'd mm. like to give you the same so as we close up Tracy tell us what's going to go on in the final episode well, the final episode is all about being powerful as work in progress nice so we're going to talk a little bit a bit more about generational beliefs. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to talk about what we've witnessed in terms of becoming even more powerful. And we're going to leave you with some thoughts on being powerful. Fabulous. Okay. Well, we will catch you in the next one. So until then, we'll see you later. Bye for now. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, 
Could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.